Good evening. My name is Casey Miley. Uh, I'm proud to say I'm a 1998 graduate of Roosevelt High School, 2007 Hall of Fame inductee, and I currently serve as the activities director at Roosevelt High School for the last four years. On behalf of the Roosevelt High School administration at, at Roosevelt, we welcome you to our 2018 Hall of Fame banquet. And let me be the first to congratulate this great group of individuals. Just thank you for your commitment to Roosevelt and your time there. And um, we are excited to share this evening with you. I would like to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Jeff Lukens. Well, good evening from me as well. It's great to have such a great group here, and uh, this has traditionally been what I consider to be one of the highlights, if not the highlight, of the athletic year at Roosevelt High School. We do not do a Hall of Fame induction every year. We do these at this point every other year, and every time we do one of these, it gets more and more special. We get to be in a cooler and cooler venue. I mean, who can beat something like this? This is like almost like my house. <laughs> it's so nice here. But, uh, and I'm very appreciative of Casey and everybody who's involved in putting this event on. I will uh, call all of them out after we eat dinner this evening. Roosevelt High School has been for the last almost 30 years a very, very special part of not only my life, but the life of my family and uh, the whole community of Sioux Falls at large. And so, I'm very, very thankful that so many of you were able to make it tonight. And with that, I would like to uh, welcome, if you look over your, probably your left shoulder, we have a very, very important group here from uh, Sioux Falls, Washington. This is the Sioux Falls, Washington High School Junior ROTC. We are going to begin with our national anthem. And we would ask that you would please stand if you are able and pay honor to our great nation with the performance of this national anthem. And please observe proper flag etiquette by standing at attention, placing your right hand over your heart, and veterans and out of uniform military personnel may salute the flag at this time. As Devin Mons Monison, Kalis McCubbin, Jason Jones, and Caden Van Nort, members of the Washington High ROTC under the direction of Colonel Burmeister, present our colors. And then Dylan Larson, a member of Roosevelt High School Concert Choir, will sing our national anthem. Post colors. Present arms. Left, 
And once again, thank you to the Washington High Junior ROTC and Dylan, great job with our anthem. Thank you so much for being here to sing that for us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to bring to the podium a Roosevelt High School graduate from the year of 2000, and also a Roosevelt High School Athletic Hall of Fame inductee a few years ago, Mr. Ryan Ovenden. And Ryan will join me here on stage and lead us in our invocation. Thanks, Mr. Lukens. If you'll bow your heads with me. <coughs> Father God, we come to you in thanks tonight uh, for all that you've given us. Uh, I thank you for, for Preston and for Stacy and uh, for Coach DeBoer and uh, for Brittany and for all the contributions they've made to the Roosevelt community and beyond. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would give them strength and wisdom and energy to be able to follow you uh, with all of their hearts and to be able to continue to glorify you with the gifts that you've given them. Uh, and Lord, I just thank you for, uh, I thank you for this wonderful school uh, that's given us all the ability to grow into the men and the women that we are today. Lord, we ask that you bless this food into our bodies and uh, we thank you for always providing for all of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Ryan. And it's time to eat. And so what we're going to do is we are, it's not gonna be very structured at all. I know this drives some people in the room crazy when I say there's not much structure to this, but I have the mic and they don't. So we are gonna start up toward the stage and we're just gonna move our way back uh, with the fairly small group we have. We should be able to handle that. The buffet is right outside. Please take as much as you want and if you wanna go back and get more, please do so. So we'll be back at about 6.45 and start our induction program. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're ready to get started with our induction ceremony for 2018 Roosevelt High School Hall of Fame inductions. It's fun to see uh, friends walking around with their grandchildren now. It's like the coolest thing ever. Like Brent DeBoer's, look at the smile on his face, and John Thune's got this smile on his face. Everybody's like happy. How many of you have grandchildren? Isn't it like the, the best thing ever? Yeah, it's, you ever said no to them? Yeah, that's, our role is to never use that word, I think, as a, as a grandparent. But welcome back, it's great to have you, and, and before we get started with uh, bringing our four inductees up here one at a time, just wanna call out a couple of things in your program. On the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the second page, the, first, the back of the first white page in the program, there's a list a pretty big list of Hall of Fame committee members. And um, if those people, if you are here, the committee members that are listed there, if you would please stand up so that we can uh, acknowledge your hard work in putting uh, this on. So Hall of Fame committee members, please have a, not have a seat, have a stand for just a second. So thank you. Just like any event, and all of you are, have been around athletics for a long time, any event that, that you attend, 
there's an awful lot, a lot, lot more that goes into it than simply showing up and having a meal and watching some kids get, kids, they're not kids anymore, but people get awards. There's an awful lot of planning that goes in. That committee works very, very hard to make sure this is a special night for everybody that's here. <clears throat> Underneath that, we have a list of acknowledgments. And as Casey mentioned before, three uh, companies and three local businesses that were not mentioned or that were not in the program, Shenanigans, Fernson, and Coke, who provided uh, just a lot of stuff for us tonight. So we want to make sure we thank them along with all of the uh, organizations that are listed. And most especially for this beautiful facility, uh, Sanford Health has been, uh, you know, Sanford has had a very, very close tie with Roosevelt High School for a lot of years. And um, anytime we need something and we just can't find where to go or who to have a, who to help us out, Sanford always comes through. So thank you to especially Jim Denovan, uh, who's a former principal at Roosevelt, now works at Sanford. And also uh, Kelby Krabinoff is incredibly gracious and generous with what he offers us as well here for our Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Also like to call out, I know we have the uh, Roosevelt High School's principal, Mr. Tim Hazlett is here. Tim is in the back, if you would stand up. Tim, thank you for your support and for everything you do for Roosevelt. We have uh, a district person who I, I wanna make sure I, I call out as well, a person who has uh, got his start in Sioux Falls at Roosevelt High School in 1991 and is, has been at, at IPC, which is our district office, for the last many, many years, 20 some odd years. And this will be his last official year in that capacity as the district athletic director and PE coordinator, Mr. Mark Miley is here. So Mark, we'd like to offer our thanks and uh, everything that you've done for our district. So Mark Miley, thank you very much. And I can't let this moment pass without saying that um, Casey Miley not only inherited Mark's genes, but he inherited Mark's job at Roosevelt, and now Casey will be inheriting Mark's job at the district level as the district athletic director and physical education coordinator. So. Um, that is, as one who has been thick with Roosevelt High School for a long time, to see that transition taking place is really does my heart good and I think should do the heart good of everybody who is in here. Uh, the best thing about it was, and I, I am kind of selfish, uh, we will still get Tony's cookies at all of our events and she will not get out of that, nor will she probably ever get out of working at an event. So, and Tony is also here. So thank you for everything that you guys have done. And Casey, best wishes to you. I'm proud of you. I love you. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for you and for our school district. We also have uh, several people here who are past inductees. You're, ne you're never a past Hall of Fame member. Once you are in the Hall of Fame, you're in the Hall of Fame. I mean, you don't get kicked out. I mean, if John Odney's past hasn't caught up to him yet, he's not gonna get kicked out. So once you're in, you are a member of a very, very special group of people. So if you are a current Hall of Fame member, if you would please stand so that we can acknowledge and recognize you as well. And a list of all of those inductees, or all of the past inductees are found kind of toward the back end of the program. We also have some things in there about the uh, number of state champions that we've had, both as teams and as individuals. Um, you know, many, many years ago, that list was really short, and so we used a really big font <laughs> in this thing. Now the list is not so short, and we have to use a font that I can barely read, which is a really, really great deal. Which brings me to a little bit of a history lesson for some of you. I know we have a lot of guests from out of town. A lot of you, your only connection to Roosevelt High School is the person that you are here to honor with your presence at this banquet. But in 1991, which, you know, if you're a young person, that seems like a long time ago, but if you are a person who has lived on the west side of Sioux Falls for any length of time or even been familiar with Sioux Falls, 1991 was not that long ago. And we had 
uh, what I fondly refer to as the little house on the prairie was being built in 1990 and 1991. Roosevelt High School was so far out in the sticks that my wife and I were, were like, why would they build a high school in the middle of nowhere? Nobody's gonna wanna go there. They're never gonna have any kids who are successful. I mean, you go through all of this stuff. Well, I guess that prediction didn't really come true because 27, 28 years later, Roosevelt High School's impact, not only on the west side of Sioux Falls, but, and not only on the state of South Dakota, but nationwide with some of the athletic accomplishments we have had in many sports, Roosevelt High School is known in more places than simply the little house on the prairie west side of Sioux Falls. And we will continue to do that. I'll never forget the first state championship that we won as a school in 1996. The volleyball team won a state tournament. And that was five or six years into our existence at Roosevelt. And it was Super Bowl time. I mean, and since then, the train hasn't stopped moving. And since then, the number of state championships that have been added, not only uh, as teams, but also as individuals, as you can see in your program, has been phenomenal. One thing that I just absolutely am crazy proud of this year, and maybe I don't want this to, to slide by, all four of our inductees, even, even though they have quite a few things in common, where they went to school, where they, went, where they were a coach at the school or whatever, and as a track junkie, I can't pass this up. All four of them were involved in the track and field program at Roosevelt. And the cool thing about that, that's cool in itself, but the cool thing about that also is we have people who are being inducted into the Hall of Fame, not for track and field necessarily, but because of their uh, support of the track program and also because of their competitive nature in the track program, they've made Roosevelt a better place. I want to make sure these Hall of Fame people understand something. These new four new people that are going in. You're going to get up here, you're going to give speeches. Uh, Preston, it's got to be under five minutes. <laughs> you're going to give speeches, you're going to tell everybody in the room how much Roosevelt High School meant to you and how much Roosevelt High School has continue to mean to you. I want to assure Brittany and Stacy and Preston and Brent that you four have meant an awful lot more to Roosevelt than we've meant to you. And never forget that. The impact that you four have had on our school is beyond words, both athletically and humanly. The way that you have treated yourselves, the way that you've treated others, the way that you've treated our school, you will never be forgotten and you will always be appreciated. So thank you for in advance for that. I looked up uh, Roosevelt High School today on Wikipedia. I don't know why, it, it, it just popped up. And when you, look, when you look up a school on Wikipedia, it says notable graduates and then it lists them. And I must say our list for Roosevelt is disappointingly short. In fact, it's so short, I'll tell you who it was. Kellen Briggs, anybody ever heard of him? Crickets? Okay, Kellen Briggs played for the Stampede. We, we had a lot of kids from the Stampede who came to Roosevelt and finished their high school careers. He's a goalie now in, in some professional level of hockey. January Jones, Okay, I had January in class. We'll just leave it there for, for now. And then there was another listing there that didn't even have any people listed. Spill Canvas. Okay, and yeah, Joe Beck and uh, well, uh, can't remember the, the lead guy's name. I had a couple of those guys in class. There was no Brittany Thune. There was no Stacy Gould. There was no Brent DeBoer, and there was no Preston Evans. Which made me, and by the way, I looked up Corsica too, Corsica High School. <laughs> there are no notable graduates from Corsica. <laughs> Until tonight, we finally have one. Which, you know, after I read that, none of you guys were listed. It verified that Wikipedia is totally fake news because we <laughs> has to be. 
My experience at Roosevelt, as many of you know, because I've, I've had lots of you in class and, and I was around when you were doing your athletic stuff, my uh, experience and love for Roosevelt cannot be overestimated. It cannot be overstated. Uh, that's why I continue to do this stuff. I retired about five years ago from that school, and I'll never retire from that school. It, it's just something that, uh, it's a place that's very, very special, and it's a place like Brent and I, uh, and several of you other folks in here, were there the first day when the place opened up. And, and to be able to be involved in something like this is uh, incredibly humbling to me, but also it's a, an amazing honor that, that I will never, um, never take for granted. So thank you so much for that. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the reason that you're here besides that great meal. And that is to meet our four inductees for the evening. One of the things I am not going to do is read the bios. You guys can read that. I'm gonna give you just a, a very short introduction to each of these and then as they make their way up here to the stage, uh, this year we have, and the, the guy's like the humblest guy ever, but I'm gonna really embarrass him. Look at the back under the screen. It's like the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to that man behind the camera, but I want you to pay attention to that guy behind the camera. That's Ben Schumacher. He is our district videographer and he put together these videos that you guys are gonna see, and Ben is like, he is a pro, and he is a great guy, and he does not like to be called out. I know that, Ben, he's shaking his head at me, but he needs to be acknowledged, and so that's a, a very appreciative, Ben, of, of all the hard work you've done. The first, our first inductee this evening is Stacy Gould Seaborn, and um, just from, I'm gonna give you a little personal story real quick about each one of them. Stacy, had she not been an athlete, Stacy would have been an All-American at Roosevelt just because of the type of person that she is. Not, I had Stacy in class, in, in my biology class, and frankly, by the end of the year, if she would have said something, I would have known who it was because she was incredibly uh, I don't want to say quiet, reserved, very respectful, and just did her thing, did her work, both in the classroom and in athletics, never asked for any, never got any glory from anybody else, never expected that, and yet she was and continues to be our school record holder in the long jump and the triple jump. At one time, she was in the top 10, I think she was at number seven, I believe, in the, in the triple jump, and was a gold medalist at the state track meet, which means she was the best triple jumper that year in the girls' state track meet. Uh, in addition, she was in gymnastics and, and many other activities at Roosevelt High School. But what I will always remember about Stacy is the type of person that she is. And for all four of you inductees tonight, this could go for all of you, and I just wanna say, you don't get into the Hall of Fame if you're a jerk. <laughs> because the committee, you know, we don't like having jerks in the Hall of Fame. And you don't necessarily get into the Hall of Fame based on what you do after high school. I mean, that's certainly most really, really good athletes and coaches go on to do more after high school. But I want to just tell you, Stacy is now, she has made us so proud. Not only is she a great athlete, not only was she a great student, she is now a dentist in town. Uh, she obviously graduated from dental school, and that's where she now is making an impact. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great, great pleasure to induct Ms. Stacy Gould Seaborn into the Roosevelt High School Hall of Fame. Stacy was a good student. I had her in class, and I think that carried over in her daily practice and preparation for all of her events. You know, Stacy had such a great work ethic and such a great intensity about her. Obviously, Stacy was one of the best jumpers that Roosevelt has ever seen, but I just loved watching Stacy practice and I loved watching Stacy compete. She was just a very, very intense competitor. She was a really good leader. You know, like any high school kid, you'll get, you know, student athletes that don't really want to work hard every day, but she always did and she was a good leader and got everybody else to work out. When you think about Stacy, you think about the fact that she still is the best long and triple jumper that Roosevelt's ever seen, you know, and she did that through coming to practice every day and just working really hard. And when you think about how many years Roosevelt High School has been open, Stacy still is the best long jumper and best triple jumper that, that our school has ever seen. You know, for a time she was in the top 10 all time 
in the state of South Dakota in the triple jump. You know, like all records, you know, someday they may be broken, but right now they're hers. And you, you'll never be able to take away the state championship or the fact that she was the gold medal winner in the triple jump. Well, thank you to everyone for coming tonight, and thank you to Jeff for that very nice introduction. I'm really honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. I had memory, many memorable moments throughout my time as an athlete in high school, but I'd like to speak to you tonight about my most memorable moment during my career at Roosevelt. During my senior season of track, our goal was to win the state championship. Rapid City Stevens had won many years in a row. I think their streak was up to 10 to 15 years. Obviously, we were very excited and motivated by the possibility of bringing the championship to Roosevelt. We worked extremely hard as a team and did everything we could, but did fall slightly short. Part of the reason that time was so memorable was due to the great teamwork involved. One quote by Henry Ford is, if everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. Even though we did not see the results we wanted, the success came from the lessons we learned. The time I spent at Roosevelt went by quickly, but the lessons I learned transferred over to other areas of my life. Establishing a base for teamwork has helped me in my relationships, both in my personal and professional life. Today I work in a dental office and it's crucial to operate as a team. We support each other to provide the best to our team and to our patients. I'm very grateful I had the opportunity as a high school athlete to learn so many valuable lessons and to transfer these to my life today. Even though the championship did not work out in our favor, the experiences were irreplaceable. Lastly, and most importantly, I would like to thank everyone for making my experiences possible and for continuing this for the athletes today. Thank you to the coaches for giving so graciously of their time and putting so much effort into the success and growth of their athletes. Thank you to my teammates and family for their support and for coming to the banquet tonight. I really appreciate it. Congratulations, Stacy, and everybody who is here with Stacy. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Just a word about pictures. Um, I've got a beautiful little backdrop over there, and, and each of the uh, inductees will get some pictures taken right after they are up here on stage. We want to assure you that that backdrop will stay up there as long as you want to take pictures as a family. So please, after we're done today, we'll get everybody over there and take as many pictures as you would like to. I know we'd like to get some of all four of the inductees together as well. Our next inductee this evening is Brittany Thune Lindbergh. Of the four, uh, well, the three student inductees this evening, um, I probably have, Brittany and I probably had the the oddest, most diverse relationship of, of any of the other three. Uh, I met Brittany when she, they, her family moved here in uh, middle school, I think you were, and she's the same age as our middle daughter, and I, I think Brittany and our daughter Allison became really good friends right away, mainly initially Brittany because Karen and I, my wife said, there's a new girl in town, go be her friend. And so Allison, being Allison, jumped all over that one. And so uh, during the course of the next several years, while Brittany was still in our public school system at Memorial and also at Roosevelt, um, we had a lot of time with Brittany at our home. And in addition to being a great athlete, I also had Brittany in, in class, and it was an absolute joy. And Brittany was one of the most transparent people that I've ever known. She, those of you who know her know exactly what I'm talking about. What you see is what you get, and if she doesn't like what you're given, she's gonna let you know that she doesn't like it. One of my, probably my favorite, and she'll mention this too, um, one of the things I get to do is work at the Howard Wood Dakota Relays on the awards area. And the year when the, the four by 800 meter relay team ran a nine, I think it was 908 in the girls four by eight. I don't know how many people they lapped on, on, in that race. 
That could have been the most amazing thing that I have ever seen at the Dakota Relays. And one of the things that made it so cool is because I, I knew all, all four of the girls, and, and I think I couldn't even announce the results because I think I was balling on, on, on the field. But Brittany's a great example of, just like with Stacy and just like with Preston and Brent, we induct people who deserve to be inducted. And Brittany Thune Lindbergh deserves this, not just as an athlete, but as a human being. So please join me in honoring and welcoming and congratulating Brittany Thune Lindbergh for being inducted into the Roosevelt Hall of Fame. I think what made Brittany such an outstanding athlete at Roosevelt was just her all-around work ethic, the you know, extra little things that she did, whether it was hitting the weight room after practice or making sure she got plenty of rest the night before a meet. Um, it's just those little things that made her stand out above some of the others. The key role that she played on those teams, whether it was you know being a part of the first Nike Cross national team when our team was ranked 10th in the country, she was a part of that team, or whether it was on the track and she was part of probably one of the best four by 800 relays ever to be assembled in the state of South Dakota. I think when I think about Brittany, I think about the role that she played on those outstanding teams. And the way that she was able to gather all her other teammates around her and, and get them to do what needed to be done for the good of the team, I think was what really made Brittany special. Such a great leader. When I think about those awesome teams that we had, Brittany was kind of the glue that kept those teams together. We had great athletes, but we had Brittany who would, would always just keep the team moving in the right direction. And I think without Brittany, those teams would have never accomplished the things that they did. Thank you. Um, I'm really honored to, to be here tonight. I just want to first thank the committee for, for um, making this decision, for making me a part of this decision. This is an incredible talent of the folks that are going to be speaking today, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Um, when I think back to Roosevelt, I think of a school that offered me and awarded me countless opportunities to pursue every passion and interest that I had, whether that was sports or music. Um, and I'm just so grateful to the teachers and the mentors and the coaches and the, my peers and students. Um, it was just such a privilege attending Roosevelt. When I reflect on my high school and collegiate athletic career, um, I reflect on a lot of challenges and a lot of rewards. And a lot of things that really taught me the values and disciplines that I employ today in my life. But what is most important and what I think I found um, all through life is it's the people that really make a difference um, and really take you to where you are and are a part of your journey. And I just want to recognize a couple of people that were a part of my journey and a reason that I'm up here today. And the first is Christy Rieger. Um, she was my coach and just what, she was the inspiration and spark um, with, with this running career. And I, I told her earlier, I don't think I would ever consider doing this in college, ever felt like I had the talent to do it in college, but she was relentless in her pursuit of me, getting me on the track team, getting me on the cross country team. Um, and it's really what instilled in me. She, she encouraged me to just maximize my potential to its fullest. I'm so grateful, so thank you. Mark Madison was the rock and the stability of the team. And your partnership was incredible. And I just thank you for your encouragement and support and what you did. You guys were just wonderful coaches, and I was so privileged to be a part of it. Um, I've got Allie Eckert, Caitlin Crowley, teammates of mine. Allie holds records in the 800 and 3200 meters, and if, if I wasn't going to meet my potential, um, Allie pushed me to do everything that I could, and I just had great teammates. I ran at a time where I really feel the talent was unparalleled. Um, I don't know that we've seen it since um, in South Dakota history. It was truly a phenomenal time, and that's part of the reason I think I was able to accomplish what I did but it's because of teammates like you and the support of your parents, Joe and Lisa, Linda Duber here, um, just the families of, of those teammates. I'm so, so grateful to all of you. Um, Mr. Lukens, an interesting relationship. I love that's what you said, but he was my mentor, um, truly was my mentor in high school. And what he taught me is that I could use my gifts and abilities to share my faith. And that's the most important part of my life. And I'm so grateful that you set such a strong example and were such a strong role model to me, but to countless students at Roosevelt. So thank you. Um, I just also want to recognize I have many aunts and uncles here, grandparents, family, friends. Just want to thank you so much. But last and not least is my parents, my parents and Larissa. Sorry. Um, I, they were such a huge support for me, and I struggled and went through a lot of different things in college. 
Um, my senior year of college, I almost quit. And I will always remember being on the phone with my dad. And he offered me such grace and said, well, no matter what you decide, we are going to support you and we're going to be here for you. And um, I just felt such freedom in that moment and knew that, wow, I can do this because my parents are behind me no matter what I choose. It was the best season of my life, the best season of my career. It offered me scholarships. Everything that really I was able to do in college was because of that year. And I'm so grateful um, to my dad for offering me that grace and freedom to choose. My mom walked me through an eating disorder my junior and senior year of college. Um, an incredible battle, and I just want to thank you. Sorry. I don't usually do this when I speak, um, and I speak in front of a lot of people. Um, thank you. It was a really challenging time, and my mom came out and just offered me so much support. And then just to Larissa for coming out for fall breaks and spring breaks and visiting me, and just to all three of my family members for coming. And um, I went to Nashville, Tennessee, which was far away, and they went to New York City, to Portland, Oregon, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama to watch me compete um, and made such sacrifices to be a part of that. So I just thank you so much. Um, lastly, when, when I left college, I left something with my teammates, and it was called 15 things, the 15 lessons that I learned. And the one thing that sticks out to me the most is what I left with them is that you have to have a reason for what you do, a purpose behind what you do. Um, and I, Condoleezza Rice, who's a, a, a very much, uh, I would call, you know, a mentor, and just, um, I, re I remember reading it in a magazine um, that she said, you have to have, have, have this purpose behind what you do. And so I created a purpose, and mine was, God gave me these gifts and, about, and abilities, and so that's why I'm gonna run. And to this day, in everything that I do, I wanna use my gifts and abilities um, to further his kingdom and for his glory, and that's what it's all about. Um, and so, with that, um, lastly, I just wanna recognize, Luke is now my partner in that. My, my family was such a part of my journey, and now my husband, Luke, who's here, who I met in Washington, is a part of my new journey. And my father-in-law and my sister-in-law are here from the East Coast, it's so wonderful to have them here and just to be surrounded by so many family and friends. So. Thank you so much for the honor. Our next inductee this evening is Mr. Preston Evans. And Preston, of the three uh, younger people who are being inducted this evening, Preston's the only one I did not have as a student, but I always knew he was around because <laughs> for a lot of reasons. But Preston is one of those guys that even when you didn't really know him that well, he always had a smile for you. I'm not, in high school, I wasn't always sure I trusted the smile, but... <laughs> He really, I mean, he's just this happy guy and, and just very pleasant to everybody. And as an athlete, I think my favorite quote, well, first of all, I'll give you a spoiler alert here in just a minute. All of you in here are going to be very, very grateful. You weren't the guy that you're going to see on this video. <laughs> That's all I'm going to tell you. Just keep an eye on the circle. Got it? The circle. But I, the best quote I ever got about you in sports was from Bob Wilbur, who is your basketball coach, right? And Wilbur said to me, I would never want him guarding me. <laughs> and if you ever saw Preston play best, some of you may not even remember that he did play basketball, but he was absolutely right. You did not want him guarding you because if you did get the ball, you were gonna get hurt. <laughs> and the idea was not to let the guy have the ball, and he didn't, and he was relentless. And then he goes on, I mean, he's known as a football player, right? I mean, he's a, one of the best football players, maybe the best linebacker we've ever had at Roosevelt. And he goes on to this great career at North Dakota State, national championships and all that. But people forget that he was an integral part of a really good basketball team, and even more so what people forget, Lisa Griebel, Agar, I always forget your, the last part of that, uh, talked him into coming out for track as a senior. He ends up getting third in the shot put in the state meet, he threw like 54 feet in the shot put. I don't know if you've ever done it before that year. So that's an athlete. And that's the kind, of, and I think I can say safely, that's the kind of athlete we still need to have in our high schools in, in this country. Preston, you definitely were one of those guys and we're really honored to induct you into the Roosevelt High School Hall of Fame.
I think what made him such a great athlete was his versatility. He was involved in three sports, was very adept at all of them. He just uh, was able to be uh, good at almost everything he did. First thing that comes to mind is the 2006-2007 the back-to-back state championships. Preston was uh, a leader of a, of a group of young men that won the first public school state football championship in Sioux Falls in the modern playoff era. They were pioneers, so to speak, and um, it, was, it was really special. He would be the guy in the weight room on a Friday morning when uh, nobody was there who would get on his phone and say, where are you? Uh, you know, we're here, we're lifting, we're a team, we need to be here. He did the things that you don't expect kids to do, and from my standpoint, it was like having another coach. Preston's legacy, well, the first thing that comes to mind is that he hit like a Mack truck, and all of us coaches spoke to that year after year when we, we'd remember those teams and, and what Preston meant to them. I think he was a good student, a good classmate, a good teammate, and a good person. The first Sioux Falls State Championship School and then we got to do it twice, and he was a vital part of that. So in my mind, that should be his legacy here at Roosevelt. Thank you everybody for showing up tonight. Uh, I've had nightmares the last two nights having to follow up Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> and before we started, she was showing me her notes, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> this going to be something so I'm not I might struggle through this but uh, I, I really appreciate uh, even being honored here and being able to ex accept this award um, you know Roosevelt's just been a, a great impact on my life but uh, I just hope in the short period of time here I can uh, I'll be able to inspire you a little bit to live a life of uh, success and excellence and the best way to explain that would be uh, success soup I call it um, over the last year, I've been uh, interested in cooking and different things. And so the other day, I was watching a TV show or a cooking show, and a lady was cooking with a master soup. Um, basically, the idea of a master soup is it never it never ends, it never runs out. When it, when the pot gets low, um, uh, you keep adding it. You add in more ing ingredients, and so in, in essence, uh, you're always building upon those 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 first ingredients. Um, and so. Uh, basically, success soup is built in that exact same way, right? Um, the things your parents are instilling in you when you're young, um, they're, they're going to stick with you for the long haul. And uh, basically, that's how my story starts. My dad uh, uh, tried to instill in me as, at a young age um, <laughs> leadership and discipline. And uh, it, it meant hard work. Uh, and I can count on one hand uh, how many family vacations we had. And uh, now I realize it was just because he was cheap, but <laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was hard at the time. I didn't understand. You know, you'd see everyone going on vacations and taking time off in the summer, and you're just like, what, what the heck, you know, what's going on? Uh, and I didn't understand it until, you know, I was a, a senior in college, and I was preparing to, um, for my last chance at a national championship. Um, and so a group of my teammates and us, it was, it was a big group of us, basically decided, hey, we're not going to go home for Thanksgiving. And then when we got to the national championship, we're not going home for Christmas. Um, and just that dedication. Um, I called my dad, and he basically he, he agreed. He said, this is, what, this is what you've done. This is what you wanted to do. So I appreciate that. Um, now Brittany made me cry. <laughs> uh, uh. So my mother instilled in, uh, some of her uh, golden heart in me. Um, and I, I never would have, uh, gosh. <laughs> never would have landed my beautiful wife if it wasn't for that. So appreciate that, Mom. And then the soup sometimes can't be all in the family. Um, commitment, dedication. And a decision made by a group of four or five of us, some of them are sitting over here, uh, in middle school, in eighth grade, uh, we, we basically made the commitment that we're going to win a, a state championship as, as seniors. And anything else that comes is going to be extra. It's going to be gravy on, uh, on it. Um, and we would run Don Sertoma. You guys know we'd run from Memorial Middle School, or our backpacks, just chugging along. We'd run down the weight room um, uh, to realize a goal that we had set and basically, I mean, that was, that was what we were going to do and, and we accomplished it. Um, my time at Roosevelt, without a doubt, allowed me to be a success at NDSU. Coach DeBoer and your staff 
Um, you guys were beyond your time. I mean, you guys prepared me uh, far beyond belief to go up to NDSU and, and do the things that I had to do. Um, there was no high schools at the time. I mean, it, it's different now, but there was no high schools at the time doing the things that we were doing. Um, uh, no high schools that were, were guided and, and led by a genuine and dedicated um, group of, of men and that we were privileged to be uh, guided by. So I, I appreciate that. Sig, uh, Clayberg, Fry, Scotty, you're, I mean, you're a big part of that too. Um, so after winning those two amazing state uh, title wins at Roosevelt, I had an unbelievable opportunity to continue, continue my career at NDSU. Uh, and there I added some more ingredients to my soup. You may not have thought it, uh, it would be good, but some humble pie alongside some perseverance was added in, uh, <laughs> to that soup. Uh, NDSU was 10-1 and one my last two years of high school, and then I showed up and we, we stunk it up. <laughs> my first year we were 6-5. and five. We were, came in as the number one team in the nation. They pulled my red shirt. We were 6-5 and five that year. Wasted a shirt, huh? And then, <laughs> then, uh, then the lowest of lows, we were 3-8 and eight as a sophomore. Uh, and then I bet you the SCSU fans thought that they had dethroned the king. Boy, were they wrong, huh? Um, I learned about realigning and, refoc and refocusing efforts as well as staying strong when times were bleak. When everyone looking from the outside is doubting things um, and things were progressively looking worse, uh, to stay the course. Um, and, and that comes from my dad, that comes from times in, in high school and just things just don't look well. Uh, and, and just in my life now, when things don't look well, it might just stay the course and keep plugging away. Attack the process is what we came up in, uh, with at NDSU. Um, I got to feel what it was like to go from the absolute worst to standing on the top of the mountain as a winner going out in my career. So it was amazing. It was an amazing experience I had there. But long story short, I could talk to you guys all night about sports and what they've meant to me. Um, but a few things, uh, I believe, stand out on uh, what it all means. First, it takes a lot of different ingredients to be a success. Championships aren't won um, at, the end of the, uh, at the end of one season, but in the winter and the spring, and maybe longer uh, than that. Secondly, everyone, no matter when they start or how old, can be a success. You're not born as a success. Um, like the soup, it's built and it has to simmer. Um, and finally, of all these things, uh, the Hall of Fame, uh, sports, life, they're just a type. Um, success, or they're just leading us to the great Hall of Fame. And that's to be written in the book of life of Jesus Christ. And at the end, uh, having a, a, lo a longing fulfilled uh, in the words, well done, good and faithful servant. And I pray that we all be able to stand in that Hall of Fame one day. Um, and so I, again, I just want to thank you guys. I just thank you for even being, uh, uh, being able to be honored up here. It's been awesome. It was a great experience. Debo, um, Mr. Lukens, I didn't know you yet, but I, I, seen, you, I seen you around. <laughs> but, but thank you guys, and uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. You think you know a guy, and then you hear about his making soup. That's so cool. That is like the best thing ever. And th those of you who have already cried, I just want to tell you that uh, the year Ryan Ovenden was inducted, the crowd was kind of taking it over and under on the, the time it would take for Ryan to start crying. I don't think you made it through a sentence, did you, before? Yeah, he's a pretty emotional guy. So you, Brittany and Preston, you got nothing on, on Ovenden. His speech took like 45 minutes because he, you know, more Kleenex, bring it up here. Our final, but certainly, I should say last but not least, uh, inductee, is uh, the oldest of the group, for sure. <laughs> um, I met Brent DeBoer in 1985. And Brent was a physical education teacher. He's actually a swimming teacher, if you believe that. Uh, I don't know why I said it that way. That didn't, didn't. <laughs> You're welcome. But we were, uh, we were both at Washington High School downtown. And Brent was one of the first people that I met when I, I came to Washington High School in 85. And jumping ahead, um, Brent and I got to know each other very, very well at Washington because we were both track coaches. I was uh, with the boys program, Brent was with the girls program. 
And so because of the collaboration that we had through track and field, uh, we got to know each other quite well, spent a lot of time together and uh, became very, very good friends. My heart was done good when Brent was was awarded, honored with the football head coach, head football position at Roosevelt. And so we went out there together as well. And so Brent, throughout his career at Roosevelt, in addition to being a great football coach, and I'll, bring, I'll say something else about that in a minute, was also completely committed to the track and field program at Roosevelt as well. And probably the most impressive thing was, as with all of our inductees, if you strip away all the athletics, Brent's value to our school extended so far beyond that. Brent was the guy who said, you're having problems with that kid in class, I'll take him. You're having a problem with that, that kid's having a problem at home, have him come in and see me. And Uncle Brent would sit down with these kids and he'd take them in class and he'd spend as much time as they needed with him and he'd give them value in their hearts. Brent is, and, and the staff that, that he mentioned, that Preston mentioned, Brent and Siegfried and Kleber and Fry, all the people who were involved in the football program at that time, you guys pretty much ruined it for the whole rest of the state because as soon as Roosevelt won that first public school state title in 2006, it was no holds barred. And you look at what's happened in the last 12 or 13 years in the state, there's an entirely new class that had to be developed because of Brent DeBoer, probably. You're the guy we can probably blame for that. But Brent DeBoer is, he was and continues to be the face of Roosevelt High School. Everybody who knew anything about Roosevelt knew and continues to know about Brent. So I would ask that you would please welcome Brent as we honor him with induction into the Roosevelt High School Athletic Hall of Fame. The one characteristic that I really appreciated in him is he surrounded himself with outstanding people. He had terrific assistant coaches. He gave those coaches confidence and uh, trust because of the great responsibility that he gave them. And as a result, I think we were a better football program for it. And it was amazing how many of those coaches went on to do great jobs at other places. I think one of Brent's greatest accomplishments was uh, winning the first title in, in, the, in, the, for, in football in the school's history, and then he went on to have a great run. Um, you know, Brent was not only a, a great football coach, but he did some outstanding things with the track and field program here. And, uh, you know, you, the kids that we had here loved him as a teacher in the classroom. So, you know, he was just a, a great coach, but more than that, he was just a, an outstanding role model for the kids. And I, I think that if you, if, you would say one of his greatest accomplishments was seeing his kids perform on the field and also in the classroom. He took great pride in that. He touched the lives of a lot of young people. He always had time for everybody. Brent had the knack of listening to people. He also surrounded himself with some really good coaches that had his same philosophy. Um, you know, the kids were always going to be the number one thing. And, um, you know, I think that, that's what made it so fun to be around Brent. Wow, I was going to say that uh, Stacy and Brittany and Preston all have grown up and changed, but I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> but I guess by looking at some of those pictures, I might look a little bit different now than, than then. You know, the first thing I want to say is, uh, you know, the reason guys like, old guys like me get up here and get this kind of recognition is because of those three kids that went before me. Um, that's why we're here. And uh, they make us look really good. I'm gonna change the rules a little bit, because I'm last. I have the mic. Nobody else is coming up after I'm done. <laughs> right? Maybe. Except for, for you. But uh, I always want to start with a disclaimer that uh, if I embarrass you, I probably did it on purpose. <laughs> By the way, when I did that for you, one of the things I said, and, and you'll, you'll agree with me, 
I talked about that little smile. It's like you did on that face, because you never knew what he was thinking. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to recognize some people uh, because as a, as a coach, not just a football coach, but any kind of coach, and you do it as long as I have, uh, your family may not always be the number one thing, at least in their mind. Uh, my wife and I used to have this discussion. She's going to get picked on a lot. She's going to be mad at me tonight, but that's okay. <laughs> because uh, she would ask me who was really number one, whether it was football or whether it was our family. Because I spent a lot of time with, with football during those days. So I'm just going to recognize some people that are really important to me. I'm not going to even say names, but these people uh, have, have been in my life now for 35, 40 years and, uh, and some longer than that, and sacrificed with me um, as we made this journey. So I'm happy. I have two of my sisters and their husbands here tonight. That really makes me happy. I have my brother and sister-in-law here tonight and one of my nephews. Little story, um, and I got a lot of stories, so be prepared. <laughs> Little story, we won the state title in 06 and 07, and the ball boys might have been O'Gorman kids <laughs> because they were my nephews, and uh, they had to be there, and that came from my wife, which was okay. But anyway, I, I really appreciate them here. My mother-in-law is here, and I'm really happy that she's here. Um, I married an Edmund woman, and I, I know I have one more that likes me, too, so I'm in good shape. <laughs> uh, my sons are here tonight. And uh, talk about things that Roosevelt High School has done for me and, and for my family. Both of my sons graduated from Roosevelt. And uh, this is where I start on John Odney. I coached basketball for John, and uh, John taught me a, a lot. And one of the things John taught me about coach, coaching was patience. And uh, some people might not agree that I have a lot of patience, but, but he, did, he did that. And he also taught me the value of, of uh, preparing and living with preparation in terms of if you have a practice schedule, this is what you do. And uh, then I, I hired some guys who also believed in that. And, uh, but anyway, Little story about John, our kids are maybe, how old would you say our kids were? Six and two, when I was coaching basketball in those last years. We had a basketball banquet, awards banquet, end of the year. And John introduced my children as broccoli and coleslaw. <laughs> Never forget that, we thought it was really funny at the time. Everybody kind of went, what? But my children are both here. Brock and his wife Colleen flew in from Los Angeles yesterday, and uh, really excited to have them back. And I don't know if you knew this, but but Brock is a product of Roosevelt High School, the art department. He's in the Fine Arts Hall of Fame. He's going to make me really proud, famous, and rich someday. <laughs> uh, he's well on his way to doing that. My other son Cole is here, and also my grandchildren, and and his wife Chelsea. Aubrey, my granddaughter, is here, and Watson, my grandson, and I'm really happy that they could get him to wait for the end of this thing so we can take, yeah, he's excited. <laughs> he, this is two nights in a row because last night we went out for dinner and he was the entertainment of the restaurant and uh, he, I'm glad they're here. So one story about Cole that uh, I've told a hundred times, but I'm gonna keep telling it because it's one of the greatest stories ever. Cole was our punter uh, when he was a senior and uh, hung out with Rogs a lot, our trainer. <laughs> Ate a lot of seeds during practice. <laughs> but we, uh, we had wristbands, we still use wristbands today. I coach our wristbands, had about 100 plays on them. But Cole was the punter, so his wristband said punt. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I looked. I looked for that wristband. Uh, I looked in his, in his room, which is uh, still a shrine to all his soccer stuff, but couldn't find it. But then uh, Jenny said that we had shipped it to, to their home, so I, didn't, I was going to show you the wristband just so you know I wasn't 
making that story up. And then my wife. Um, I'm going to tell two quick stories about my wife. She's, she's going to kill me, but <laughs> it's okay. Uh, in 06, uh, we decided we were going to do a highlight video of the football program that year. So we hired this guy. It was going to cost me $800 to do it. We're getting toward the end of the season, and he had, she knew him and his wife from Ethan Allen, I think, or somewhere like that. I don't remember. I forget a lot of things. But uh, we, uh, we were going to go take a look at what he had done already on this highlight film. So it's playoff time. And uh, I'm driving, and she's riding. And you'd think that after living here for a long time, we'd know where we're going. We got lost going here. We're, we end up in the cathedral parking lot. You know where the cathedral is downtown. And we're sitting there. So here's my, my mild-mannered wife, who uh, I, I'm sure she maybe knows some things about football, but I didn't think she knew as much as she expounded on that night in the car, because I was told that if I didn't make some personnel changes, we weren't going to win another game. <laughs> the greatest story ever. I, I kind of sat there and went, OK, but uh, I didn't make any changes. <laughs> the other thing I'm going to tell you is uh, we started as a coaching staff. We would meet on Wednesday nights, and then we would meet on Friday nights after the game, and we would meet on Sunday nights to prepare for the next week. And we put a lot of time into in what we're doing. And I wasn't sure that she always liked the fact that our home was invaded every Wednesday and Friday and Sunday. But when I retired, she was angry because the coaches were not going to be over anymore. And it wasn't really that she really spent a lot of time with them because most of the time we were downstairs and she would go to bed. But uh, it was just the fact that she's gotten used to them. And I really appreciated that from her. So that stuff being said, I got a few memories I want to talk about, about Roosevelt High School. Um, Mark Miley. Uh, I think that when I got hired, I might have been the third person hired at Roosevelt. Bob Perdames was hired as the principal. I think Mark was hired as the uh, athletic director, and then I might have been hired as football coach. And I, I remember calling Mark after I got hired, wanted to say I, I, I'd known Mark from, he'd coached basketball and so on, but I, I called him and we had a nice conversation. And um, this is where I started to learn about Mark and being organized and just what he was really like. Because in that conversations, conversation, one of the first things he told me is, I want your football staff all to be dressed alike, all to look good at every game. Now this is coming, I, I didn't, wasn't even, hadn't hired a staff yet. We didn't have a school, but he was already teaching me what it was like to be organized and get things done right. And uh, that's all I want to say. I could go on and on about Mark and John both because they were huge influence in my life, but I'm, I'm not going to do that because then we'll be here all night. Okay, some of the things uh, I remember about Roosevelt, my memories that I want to share with you. Jeff already mentioned one of them, but this is really a memory I'll, I'll never forget. First morning, first practice at Roosevelt High School, we walk out, you're there for cross country, I believe, and he's right, there is nothing. It, it's soybeans and corn, there's deer running around out there. <laughs> Seriously, the, the golf course, it, it was nothing. Sertoma ended right now where the entrance goes. There is no road back there. And so here we are thinking this is, we're out in the middle of nowhere. But it was a huge memory because now you drive out there and it, in 25 years it's mushroomed into its own little city. But I won't ever forget that. Football homecoming at Roosevelt. Some of you may remember this and some of you may not, but this is an experience. If you've been to Howardwood, which you all have, you realize there's a huge press box. And coaches on the sideline have phones and the guys upstairs have phones. Well, Jerry Miller, bless his heart, decided that we should have 
he likes Jerry too. We should have homecoming at Roosevelt High School, which we all thought was a great idea. We, our kids will love running out of the back door. Yada yada, it's, it's a great, gonna be a great experience. Well, what are we gonna do about the guys that are supposed to be in the press box and the phones? Well, we'll put scaffold up. Well, we did this two years in a row. Both years it blew about 75 miles an hour with the wind. Those scaffolds were going this way and that way. The guy, the first year we did it, the guy from Sioux City West wouldn't go back up after halftime. <laughs> the second year we did it, we played Rapid City Stevens and their coach got so angry, he flipped us off at the end of the game, wouldn't shake our hands. So that was our experience with homecoming at Roosevelt High School. We did win, yeah, both of those games. We did. Okay. The first charge, probably a lot of you don't remember that in 91, but we do. Uh, what an experience, my boys wanted to ride the horses. We had horses out there, it was, it was, uh, it was before turf, obviously, that's why we had horses. I mean, we had, no, we didn't have turf. But uh, what, that was a great experience. If you go into Roosevelt High School, which I did today, by the way, uh, he said, I gave my keys back about a month too early, otherwise I could have wandered around a little bit more than I did. That's another story. It took me seven years to get my keys turned in. <laughs> but I did, I did that on purpose, too. But anyway, if, if you go into Roosevelt by the council's office, you can still see one of the first charge hats and one of the first charge hankies. And what an experience. And then I got a little confused, which that happens to me, too. Uh, we also had a uh, uh, President's Bowl extravaganza with nine toes in the motorcycle. I don't know how many of you remember that, but he tried to start the field on fire, and I thought that was at the same time, but Mr. Miley informed me that was later on. So, <laughs> moving on. All right. Next one. I had, uh, I had a great opportunity to not only coach football, but I had a great opportunity to work with some, some wonderful young people in the discus and the shot. Um, I had a great opportunity to work with some wonderful coaches, uh, uh, Lisa Griebel, and I'm not gonna say your last name, and uh, Stacy Main, Stacy Nelson, but uh, had a great opportunity to work with some really wonderful kids, had, had a chance to have some state champions, um, I'm sure that they were a lot smarter than I was, but I acted like I knew everything about it. And uh, sometimes that works. Um, but two of my memories on uh, coaching the throws, and this is really Ryan Hoven that's here. He hit me with a shot put in the auxiliary gym. Uh, and it wasn't his fault. I'm pretty sure I wasn't paying attention, uh, which uh, that happens a little bit with me too. And then I got hit with a discus uh, at a meet outside. Uh, some kid from, from uh, left-handed kid from Brandon, big red-headed kid, he's got his last throw. And I know, I know that he's, you know, he wants to qualify. He's, this is coming. But I also knew that he wasn't going to get his foot through. So that disc was going to go out here. It wasn't going to even get in the sector. Well, he was way short, hit the top of the discus metal, I'm standing outside, came right down, hit me on the head. Uh, fortunately, now that may be one of my problems still, but <laughs> fortunately, uh, Mike Lynch, that was his name, Tyler's dad, Tyler's dad was there and he, he ran up because I, I thought I was bleeding and, and uh, I was, we, we went on with the rest of the, the meet, but that's uh, two of my memorable experiences along <laughs> Along with, uh, along with some really nice kids who won some state championships. Some little things, that, uh, next one. We get to the, uh, am I okay? Okay. <laughs> we get to the dome. Uh, 12 on that clock. 12? Okay. Uh, we get to the dome, and uh, we, been, we were there in 04, and, uh, and got back in 06, and we got there in 06 and my wife, again, told me before the game, before I left, if you guys are playing like 
I'm coming down at halftime. Okay. All right, now, this, this is a true story. True story. So, it's, it's halftime, and one of my greatest halftime speeches ever, it's time. You guys have probably seen that. But uh, we, we get in the locker room, and a couple of the guys are sitting out there drawing X's and O's, and I'm walking in, and my God, here she is. She's right behind me. And I said, what are you doing down here? She goes, I told you, if you guys are playing bad, I was coming down here. So I had to chase her out. But that's a great story, true story. Uh, I, I wouldn't let her in. So, um, a couple of, of uh, <laughs> these, are, these are really, we, we did a thing that year too with uh, an Eminem song. And it, I don't know, what was, what's the name of that song? Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself. We, I had Cole put it on a loop. And because uh, and in there it says you got one shot, one opportunity, yada, yada, yada. So we would play it before practice, after practice, before games, after games. I kind of figured out that we probably, or I probably heard that song a thousand times in, in that year. And uh, I don't think it had anything to do with anything, but we kind of bought into it. It was a big deal. And now I really don't like that song anymore. <laughs> Another thing, I, we, did a, we did a thriller dance-off one time. Uh, where, where is he? Blayberg, where's, where's, where's the guy? Thriller guy. Where's he sitting? There he is. <laughs> You want to talk about some provocative dancing. <laughs> that was the one and only time we did the Thriller dance-off by position. And by the way, I stole it from Augie because Coach Salem said they did it. It was a great deal, and we never did it after that. <laughs> so I got uh, one more thing, and then I'm going to get serious. <laughs> uh, this, this might be my, my greatest uh, greatest memory of uh, my coaching career at Roosevelt High, and that was winning the first state title as a public school. By the way, I got one more story before I get into that. First time we beat Sioux City E. Healing, we way back when, I don't know if Casey was playing in it or not, but we, we're young and we, we, uh, you know, we hadn't beaten them ever. And we beat him, Mark Miley comes up and he hugged me I thought he broke my jaw. I, I'm not kidding. He hugged me so hard. I, I couldn't talk for about 10 minutes. But uh, my point there is he, he was just as big a part of our, our programs at Roosevelt and what he's done in his job as anybody else. So I just wanted to mention that. But winning that first title was, uh, was an accomplishment that, you know, the journey was long. We, we, we did a lot of things to, to make that journey. I remember coming back from Watertown after we'd made the death march. If you read the Argus, my favorite Argus leader, people. Uh, and uh, I'm laying on the front seat in the bus because we'd just gotten beat by a lot. And uh, a couple of coaches came up to me and said, Coach, we gotta, we gotta make some changes. We gotta do something different. And from that day forward, we, we made some commitments to our program. We made some commitments to the weight room. We made some commitments to our kids, and we got better. And so, you know, I hear all these uh, these people, kids talk about can't win, can't do this. You know, I think Preston talked about it too. You can do what you want to do. It, it's perseverance. It's the soup. It's whatever it is. I mean, it's. You have to make a commitment to do it, and you have to believe in what your commitment is. So that was one of the biggest thrills I've ever had, is, is doing that. Because you got to realize, I, I came from a town of 75 people, small town guy. I played eight-man football. I wasn't a great football player. But I'll tell you what, I think one of my strengths, because I don't have a whole lot of them, but I'm smarter than you think I am. But one of the strengths that I have and one of the things I really take pride in is I try to hire people 
that wanted my job, that wanted to coach, and I let him coach. And we built a relationship. And I think that's one of the things that, that made us really good, is everybody that I hired, and I had to get rid of some people. I mean, it, it was a process. But in the end, uh, that's, that what, that's what it was all about. So that was a thrill of mine. I, I just, uh, I tried not to mention too many names because you always forget names. Uh, here's, here was one of my sheets. John, you'll appreciate this from scouting for you. John used to make fun of me because when I'd go scout, I'd come home with one sheet and then it would have three things written on it. And he'd go, Geez, is that all you get? No, I got 17 sheets, John. They just, I rank big. So uh, I, I, there's so many people. I started writing down names. And I, I just, I can't do it. I, I, I would forget someone and I would feel terrible. But you all know that uh, who you are. Um, and you made this a reality. Uh, you guys that, that worked with me, not for me, but with me. Um, we had a great run, and, and uh, I, I will never forget my, my time at Roosevelt. Um, I thought when I retired from there, I, I was going to be done. But uh, I have friends who, who saw it otherwise, and also I had a wife who said I needed to get out of the house. So <laughs> that being said, I am truly blessed. I am humbled, and I am honored. Uh, to be recognized as a part of the Hall of Fame. I worked really hard to be respected by the guys I worked with and the guys who coached in the state. I never really ever coached one time or thought one minute that I should be rewarded for what I did. And truly from my heart, this induction is for all the coaches, all the athletes, that I've had the privilege to work with and work for. I loved every kid that I ever worked with. I cherished every moment that I was with them. I have no regrets. If I have any regrets at all, is that I probably worked too hard, too many hours when my own boys were growing up. And uh, I'm trying to make it up to them. It's, it's hard to do because now they're, they're 34, 29. I can't spoil them anymore. So trying to spoil Aubrey and Watson. That's my next goal. So thank you very much to, to everyone involved. I, I do appreciate it. And uh, go Riders. Well, this concludes our induction ceremony, and we want to make sure, as we mentioned before, that you have plenty of opportunity to take photographs and, and just hang around and visit with people who are here. Uh, we are, I know I speak for the entire committee, for Mr. Hazlett, Mr. Miley, both Mr. Miley's, when I say we are, this couldn't happen if we didn't have people supporting it, and having you people come to this is a, a real tribute to the way you think about Roosevelt High School. We want you to feel about Roosevelt the way we do. And so thank you so much for coming, and we hope to see you again in a couple of years, and a special congratulations to Stacy and Brittany and Preston and Brent for your induction this year. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.